Yo, what's up guys, Sam here. Welcome back to another video. Hope all of you are doing well today. Been doing a lot of thinking lately, you know, some thinking for the good and some thinking for the bad. But most importantly, some thinking about Apple's Silicon Mac lineup. This is something that I and many others are very excited for because it's essentially the biggest shift for the Mac. I mean, arguably ever, but at least since the early 2000s when Apple switched from Power PC, which is what made the computers work, to Intel, and, and that was a big deal. And now Apple's completely saying goodbye to Intel and moving on to their own chips, uh, basically what they gotten the iPhone and iPad right now, they're going to be putting in the Mac. This is a really good idea on so many accounts because you can see how well iOS or watchOS runs on Apple design chips. So if Apple puts macOS on there, then obviously it's going to be pretty wild. I mean, some early benchmarks have come out and it's, uh, it's impressive. And this is from the A12Z processor that's currently inside a Mac mini as part of a developer transition package. It's essentially something that developers can sign up for to get their apps ready. But still, we've got questions like how fast exactly are these processors going to be? Is the price going to go up or down? And perhaps most importantly, when is each model coming out? Apple's told us it's going to be a two-year period, but when is the iMac 27-inch coming, the 24-inch new one, the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro? I started to read into the room rumors, and I think I cracked the code here for what Apple's doing. It's a classic sales technique. They do it pretty much every keynote presentation, and it's going to work like this. Well, if you look at what Apple's going to do with the first publicly released Mac with Apple Silicon, it's supposed to be a new version of the 13.3-inch MacBook Pro, or some lower-end MacBook, essentially. Notice they're not starting off with a redesigned 32-inch bezel-less iMac or a Mac Pro for supercomputer users or even a 16 inch MacBook Pro, or even a, a, a Mac mini which can get specced out. They're starting off with something simple, a MacBook Pro, one of their most popular computers, if not the most popular, because they're gonna get that into a lot of people's hands immediately, and it's gonna just be the same thing, really just the same MacBook, but inside is Apple Silicon. This is Apple setting the foundation, all right? Because these are very space constrained machines. You don't have a ton of room in a notebook. I mean, they're made to be as small and portable and compact as possible. But Apple's going to put Apple Silicon in there, and it's going to be pretty good. Like, I think it's going to be really, really good. So what does Apple do next? The 24-inch iMac. This is also rumored to come in the fourth quarter of this year or the first quarter of 2021. This is the biggest update to the iMac ever. It's going to be a bigger screen on the 21.5-inch model, bringing it up to 24 inches, slimmer bezels, a redesigned body, apparently rumored to look similar to the iPad Pro. It is going to be absolutely phenomenal. But notice that again, Apple's not doing the whole iMac line. They're doing the 24 inch model uh, around the corner. The 27 inch just got updated with Intel. So why is Apple waiting? Around this time, I think we're gonna be seeing a redesigned version of not only that first MacBook Pro they came out with, but also the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Kuo again says that redesigned versions of those computers with Apple Silicon are coming. And this is where Apple really starts to ramp things up because they're gonna have bigger models to work with than they've ever had before. Then they're gonna throw it in the 27 inch iMac. Then they're gonna throw it for sure in the Mac mini if they haven't already. And most importantly, the Mac Pro. Um, the Mac Pro, within two years, is going to be introduced with Apple Silicon. So why is Apple doing it like this? Well, if they came out with a Mac Pro on day one, let's say they even updated everything at once, it's going to be way too much information out there, and you're going to see the top benchmark and be like, ah, anything I buy that's not that is just not going to be as good. It's like if somebody put you in a Ferrari and then drove you to a Toyota dealership, you're going to be like, well, all these cars suck because I've already seen the best and I'm not even interested in buying anything else. I'm just going to kind of stay where I'm at. But if Apple starts slow with some base level MacBooks and then jumps to a redesigned iMac and then throws it in a, a bigger version of the MacBook and then throws it into a bigger iMac and then throws it into a Mac Pro, you can see the ramp here because the performance is only going to get more severe. If they threw it in the Mac Pro on day one, you're going to be like, wow, that's insane, and then be bored with everything else. So I think rather than Apple being you know, supply chain constrained or you know, poor planning, I don't really think any of that plays into it here. I think this is strictly marketing these machines. If you start slow and hear how great those little baby machines are, the very, very first ones, you can only imagine what's coming next. And that's when Apple's gonna throw it at you and say, oh yeah, this is what we've actually been working on. This is truly you know, our magnum opus for what we've, we've developed with our chips. And this also duly serves a purpose by updating some of the most popular products right off the bat with Apple Silicon. Then you can get it in the hands of customers. Everybody's gonna be like, wow, this is great. Why do we ever use Intel? And then it just further builds on more hype for the bigger and more expensive products. And I hate to admit it, but it works. 
and, and it works every time. I'm really excited for it. Hope you guys are too. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like down below, hit subscribe for more. I hope this helps you understand why the Mac you're looking to buy hasn't been updated with Apple Silicon immediately. All right, that's all for now. See you guys in the next video.